Hey everybody, it's Amy from Chattables. I wanted to give you a quick overview of how to get started using Espresso. Uh, just so you know, there is a complete writing guide that we've developed for Espresso as well as for how to write for Storyteller Cafe. So I would really recommend that you download those from our website. Go to chattables.com and go to the For Authors page and you will see a form that you fill out to download those writing guides and those are going to be really, really helpful. When you're ready to dive into Espresso, you can go to espresso.chattables.com and the first thing you're going to see is a login button. So I'm already logged in, it's not showing up, but you will see a login button and you will click on that and you'll get a pop-up and you need to log in with your Amazon information, your, your Amazon account information. So the same email um, and password that you use to log in to Amazon, that will get you logged into Espresso. And you should then see a um, like the save story button here that will show you that you're logged in. Also, the, the button will disappear. So make sure you're you're logged in. That way, you can save your work, and it will actually automatically save it for you, like every every few minutes. And that's really important because you don't want your work to be lost. Okay, so when you come in, all this is going to be blank, um, but you will see these orange bars here, and those are the first things that you need to fill in. So you need to put a series title and a story title. Now, you may only be writing one story and not like a bunch of stories for a series, but just so you know, we store everything in our database according to series. So even if you're only doing one story, you need to go ahead and put in the series title. It can be the same as the story if, if you like, but you need, need to fill those out. Those two pieces of information um, have to be there in order for us to be able to automatically save the your work and also for you to be able to save it by clicking on the Save Story button. So once you've done that, um, you can also create a, um, a short description for the series and for the story. These are, we call them log lines, and we use these to give the listener like a brief uh, overview of what the story is going to be about so they can decide if they want to hear it or not. Okay, and then basically that's this is where we store all the information for your story. You'll see that this is also where the episode blocks are going to show up. We only have one episode by default, but you can add additional episodes by just clicking the Add Episode button. Okay, I'm just going to delete this one here. Um, see, I can got, get rid of it. And then over in this main panel, that's where you're going to be working on the content for your specific episode. Okay, so every story is going to have at least one episode. But as I said, you can add more. And then to add content to the episode, you come over here and then you work with this little, these series of blocks. And you can simply, you know, click on them to uh, put content into the episode. So typically, you know, you'll start out with a story block where someone's going to say something. And then you can choose which of the characters you want to talk in that block, right? We've got Alex, Madison, Lily, and Colin are the four cafe characters. So let's say we start out with Madison in this block and she's going to say something, you know, hey, um, listener, I hope, you know, things are going well. And then you want to add another block perhaps where um, where Alex says something. And then perhaps you want to have Alex ask a question. Okay, so I want to say Alex is going to ask a question. We're going to get into this a little bit later in another uh, video, but you'll see if you're asking a question, then you have to have obviously a response for um, if the listener says yes or something like a yes, if it's the in the affirmative, then you're going to want to have the character say something. And if they answer in the negative, you're going to want to have them say something else. All right. You can also save this response, but I'm not going to get into that now. But this could come in really handy later. And then you may want to add an open question. In that case, perhaps Alex ask an open question. And in this case, we're not going to listen to the, um, we're, we're going to listen, but we're not going to try to interpret what the what the listener says. We're just going to move on with the story in a way that keeps the story flowing. Perhaps, you know, Madison chimes in after that. Just We'll go into that in more detail. It's also in the writing guide. But these open questions are really great because they give the listener a chance to, like, you know, say something more than just a yes or no or a maybe or whatever. Um, and then that way they feel more engaged in the story. Okay, so this, this is my... Um, what I've put together for my, my first episode so far. And then I wanted to show you that if you decide to move these blocks around, you want to change the order, the way to do that is just to simply click on this and drag it around. And that's going to change the order of the, the block. So these are the things that you, you move, these, um, the, these small, let's call, we call them thumbnails. 
All right. And again, your story is going to be saved for you automatically every so often, but it never hurts for you to, you know, go ahead and save the story, especially before before you exit. And let's look at very quickly what one of these actually looks like. So I'm going, I've got a series called um, Crimes from the Flying Goose. I'm going to choose that series. It's already saved in the database. It's going to select it from the database and you'll see I have three stories associated with that particular series. I'm going to just pick the first one so I'll load the story and now it's going to warn me that hey you might lose your work because it's getting ready to load something over top of what you just wrote and you haven't saved it yet right because you notice I never put in a series or a title so I wasn't able to save it but we were just you know playing around for demo purposes so I can go ahead and safely say yes it's okay to overwrite it and it's going to load the story in and now you'll see what everything looks like when it's all filled out all right and then the last thing that I wanted to show you is that um, take advantage of the fact that you can click on these play buttons with any of these content blocks to hear how the character is actually going to say that that line or whatever you wrote in the block see um, I'll give you an example here this is Alex talking hi there first name Welcome to the series, Crimes from the Flying Goose. So you can see see how that sounds, and that sounds pretty good. They're, the uh, synthetic voices um, actually do a really good job, but sometimes they don't pronounce things the way you would think they're going to pronounce them, so you may want to make a few adjustments in that. Um, and so it's always good to kind of preview what, what things sound like before, yes. Hello, first name. before you're finished. So Alex, I heard this series described as a cozy mystery. What makes it cozy? Okay, um, and then you also see that I use the first name here as a variable. You just write that exactly like you see it here with a small f and a capital N. And then that way, when the story is actually um, played for the listener, it's going to replace this first name variable with the listener's name. So the characters can actually address the listener by their real name, and that's, uh, that's kind of a, a nice feature. Okay, so that's an overview of how to get started with Expresso. Um, I will go into more detail about some of the more advanced features in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, thanks a lot for paying attention.